The movie begins with Kyle running over a student and pretending to break his leg as a prank to gain attention at college. He introduces himself as the student envoy. None of the students are impressed, especially Lydia. Everyone follows Kyle for information, but he seems to know nothing. Lydia walks away, but her mom asks her to come back and listen to Kyle's story of academic excellence. Kyle tells them the story of former students Katie and Andy. They stayed in love and together until they begin junior year. As we dive into the past, Andy's friend Corkin tries persuading him to stop sending Katie mails and break up, but Andy doesn't listen. Out of nowhere, Katie surprises Andy and says she's here to support his tournament tonight and wish him a happy anniversary. The bigger surprise is her transferring to Andy's college. Corkin films a video of his friend Jake to upload on YouTube, and meanwhile, Andy gets Katie settled in her dorm. Andy comes back to his dorm and seems a little low. Corkin suggests she dumps Katie again before she ruins his college experience, and asks if Andy for their beer pong tournament in an hour. Kyle enters and tells the boys he's back but won't be present at the tournament tonight because he has a frat meeting. At night, everyone goes to the bar for the tournament, and Katie finds out if you tip the waitresses, they'll flash you. Soon, the match begins and Katie is happy to see her boyfriend winning. Andy's team wins the match and all waitresses start flashing. Katie asks Andy to meet him in an hour and she'll treat him for winning and their anniversary. After Katie leaves, Andy gets shocked to know his next match will be with a girl from his past, Jenna. Jenna was Andy's first kiss, crush, and almost boink. She got bit by a snake before their deed, left in an ambulance, and Kyle never heard from her again. Kyle finds her on the beer pong website as soon as possible and asks her for her number. Andy calls Jenna and asks him to join her girl's tour bus, embarking from Illinois to Atlanta instead of going there directly for the next match. After the call, Andy gets second thoughts about leaving Katie as soon as she arrives for a road trip, but Jenna's picture and the boys convince her. The boys need someone to sponsor their trip to Illinois, so Jake takes them to meet his rich friend Arash. Arash says he will sponsor the trip as long as they take him with them and the girls on the bus are virgins. Out of nowhere, the lights go out and the CIA enters pointing guns at Arash. Meanwhile, Katie has been waiting for Andy for three hours. Later, the boys are taken by the CIA and, according to Kyle, interrogated and tortured. When the boys gain consciousness, they're in Maryland and free, but Arash is now penniless with his father losing his position. Andy calls Katie and updates the situation, but she doesn't believe his story. Meanwhile, the rest of the boys steal a cab. Other drivers run after them, and Arash has no idea how to drive. They stop to let Andy inside and then drive away again. Back at college, Kyle introduces Katie to her new roommate, Amy. Amy invites Kyle to her girls' party tonight to feel better about Andy ditching her. Meanwhile, Andy calls Jenna and tells her he can't make it today, so he'll meet her at her next stop at Nashville. Soon, Arash stops to take a piss at a strip club, and Corkin and Jake are forced to watch the show by the manager. Outside, Andy listens to Katie on call, and inside, all three boys get a lap dance by the manager's wife and twin daughters. Arash has never been touched by a woman before and pees mid-lap dance. Outside, Katie eats Andy's ear off talking about her day and says she's no longer angry because she saw the news about Arash's dad. When Andy opens the door to go inside, the boys run outside and start driving away because the manager is after them for pissing on his daughter. They stop the car midway so Andy can sit. On the road, a girl hops in and they decide to ask her for a taxi fare. She says she knows the cab is stolen and she won't pay. Later, they stop by a convenience store so Corkin can take a dump, and the girl says she's going to buy some drinks. They don't notice when she gets off, she transfers a gun from her boots to her skirt. They all follow her inside and plan to make her buy them food and then ditch her at the store. Only if they knew instead of paying, she would take out her gun at the cashier and ask him for money. She even grabs the car keys and runs away with the money, leaving the boys at the store. The cashier follows her with a gun but can't get her in time. Meanwhile, the boys run away from the back door so the cashier doesn't shoot them. They walk and sit near the road praying for help. Out of nowhere, a school bus full of pretty girls stops by to help them. They agree to drop them off at Nashville. At night, Corkin tries tempting a girl, Sarah, to break her chastity code, but she tells him she's the Reverend's daughter. Sarah demands the truth and Corkin tells him their reality and asks if she can take them to Nashville and Atlanta both. She agrees and announces a road trip. 
Meanwhile, Katie goes to Amy's party and sees all the girls getting intimate. Amy says they're all interested in girls until they graduate. Okay guys, quick pause to remind you to comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. On with the recap. Back in the bus, Andy calls Jenna and lies about still being a singer, instead of just another college guy like the one she hooks up with. She has high expectations from him and sends him a picture which he hugs while sleeping. In the front, Arash calls a company to get naughty and luckily an Indian girl, just like him, Sujatmi picks up the call. He gets very happy and the entire bus listens to their intimate talk. On the back seat, Sarah is sleeping next to Corkin and he tries to slide his hand inside her skirt. Next, he unhooks her bra and slides it out of her top. At the same time, Arash is so seduced by the call he accidentally hits a pig on the road and everyone wakes up. Next, Corkin starts driving and gets disgusted by Arash's fluids on the steering wheel. In the morning, when Andy wakes up, he is surprised to see Katie's mom. They have arrived in Kentucky and Corkin made Katie call her mom in advance to give them a place to stay. The entire bus unloads to get showered and have supper. After supper, the boys teach the girls beer pong with Red Bulls and Corkin goes on a walk with Sarah. At night, Andy calls Sarah and she tells him about his music video on YouTube uploaded by Corkin. Andy gets angry and rushes outside to interrupt Corkin and Sarah, almost locking lips. Corkin says the video will help him get Jenna, and Andy lets Corkin go. In the morning, Katie's mom packs everyone lunch so they can eat on their way as they hit the road again. Finally, they reach their destination, and Andy meets Jenna. Jenna takes Andy on stage and announces he's going to perform his new song, In the Buff. She starts taking his clothes off as he sings, and everyone cheers for him. Later, Jenna starts getting close to Andy in her dressing room, and simultaneously, Sarah starts taking her clothes off for Corkin on the bus. Meanwhile, back at college, Sarah sees Andy's new video performing online and gets shocked seeing him kiss Jenna. Little does she know Andy is kissing Jenna even right now, but he says he can't go any farther than kissing, and Jenna doesn't make him. Jenna wishes him good luck with Katie, and Andy leaves. Andy calls Katie, but she's mad at him, so he cuts the call and goes inside the bus to ask Corkin to leave instantly. Corkin is annoyed at him for interrupting his lovemaking session. Later, Andy calls Katie again, but she cuts the call. At night, Andy's team gets ready to compete against other teams. Roz R's team is playing the best, and Andy's team feels intimidated to play against them. Outside, Jenna is leaving and Katie comes out of the cab she's going to sit in. Jenna calls Katie a lucky girl and tells her Andy's playing inside. Inside, Andy's team is panicking because now they're up against Roz R and Jabba. Katie enters and talks to Andy. She tells him she's letting go of what he did and transferring back to her university. Soon the match starts and Roz R instantly takes the lead. Roz R keeps throwing balls and Andy's team doesn't even get a turn till the timeout. Andy suggests his team pray for a miracle and everyone makes fun of them for praying. Their prayers work and finally they get a turn. Jake pots a ball and passes out on the floor because he's too drunk. Now they can either play or forfeit. Katie decides to take her top off and kiss Roz R to distract him so Andy can pop the cup in his hand. This automatically makes Andy's team win and everyone starts cheering. Back to the present, Kyle tells Lydia Andy tried cashing on his buff success, but that fame only lasted 15 minutes. Katie got her scholarship back and kept dating Andy. Arash started working with and dating Sujatmi. Jake started coaching beer pong. Corkin got into a committed relationship too, and Kyle will keep working at Ithaca until he gets a real job. As Lydia gets close to Kyle, he thinks she will ask him out, but instead she asks where the group of girls dating the same gender until graduation hangs out. Do you think Katie and Andy would have stayed together if Katie didn't transfer back? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time.